Wasn't that uh, music beautiful? Boy, I was blessed. Every element of worship is important. And music is just so uplifting. You know, we've been uh, having a series on, on the uh, parables. And it started with Pastor Ben, a beautiful sermon on the prodigal son. And last week, we um, looked at the wheat and the tares, if you recall. So today, we're going to look at another parable. Actually, it's two parables. Uh, the, they call twin parables, the parable of the treasure and the pearl. <clears throat> so I want to get to it right away. In Matthew chapter 13, you could follow on the screen, verses 44 to 46. Here we have the parable. The kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom is heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. <clears throat> These twin parables, what they do, they talk to us, uh, to us about the value of Jesus Christ and the kingdom. Nothing is more important than Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. And nothing is greater than Jesus Christ and the kingdom. Have you found something in your life have you found something that is worth giving everything up for? Well, welcome to the parable of the treasure and the pearl. Treasure and its buying power. You know, have driven men and women for centuries. For centuries, they've embarked on incredible journeys to try to find something, a treasure, something that brings value to their lives. For instance, the Spanish explorers, Hernán Cortés, he invaded the Incas in Mexico. I think there's something going on here. What he did was took shiploads, shiploads of gold to the of Spain. You want me to go on this? This. Okay. And not only him, but then you had Hernando Soto, who was looking for treasures and came across Florida. And then Coronado. You know, he was looking for another civilization like the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas, these are civilizations that are really uh, great civilizations. And so Coronado was looking for gold, and he came across the Grand Canyon and the Pueblo Indians. He was kind of disappointed. Another civilization like that of the Aztecs and these others. And let us not forget let us not forget the gold rush of 1849, which resulted in young men leaving their families in the East and coming to California to the gold rush. You know, they didn't return to their families, to their loved ones. So, so let, us, let us have a little prayer here. Let's pray before we get deep into this study. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will give us understanding <clears throat> as we read this story, this passage, this parable. Bless us, God, and help each one of us to understand the value of the kingdom. So, the hidden treasure is found in verse 44. It says this, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. <clears throat> Commentaries, 
Christ's Object Lessons, page 104, says, In the parable, the field containing the treasure represents the Word of God. And the treasure is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So here's where you find the treasure. Here's where you find Jesus Christ. And so remember that a parable, a parable is a brief story that makes a point. And it's a whole story together that makes a point. So it's not just the kingdom was like a treasure. It was like a treasure hidden in a field. Hidden in a field. And the man discovered it. He buried it again. Went and bought that field. And it says he was full of joy. He was filled with joy. Now this parable. Once again the whole story is important. So this story has three parts. Three parts. So, finding the treasure. At the start of this story, the treasure is not in plain sight. It was not in front. That tells us that something, it tells us something about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It tells us something about the kingdom of God. The value of the kingdom, of the gospel, is not obvious. It is not obvious <clears throat> to people at first. I don't know how many of you have watched the antique show. It's the uh, roadside antique show. People go there, they take antiques, and they find out how much these antiques are worth. They get an estimate, <clears throat> an appraisal on them. Well, in Raleigh, North Carolina, on Saturday, June 27, 2009, the highest value appraisal in the 13 years of the program. Four pieces. There's a lay. Four pieces of Chinese carved jade and celadon from the Qin Lung dynasty. 1736 to 1795 <clears throat> including a large bowl. You can see it there. A, a large bowl crafted for the emperor. Now it was given a conservative estimate at this auction of 1.7 million. The owner inherited from her father this whole collection. And the father bought these objects in the 1930s and 1940s while stationed, stationed in China as a military liaison. And the appraiser of ancient H&M Asian arts, James Call uh, Callahan, noted that fine quality, the fine quality of these pieces, evidence that they were not, they were not for simple sale to tourists. It was determined that a mark under that bowl, there was a mark there at the bottom of the jade bowl that translated said, by imperial order, these belonged to the emperor of that dynasty back in 1736. You know, some people hear about God, hear about Jesus, hear about the church, but they don't realize how important, how essential, how necessary God is for our lives. So they go day after day, week after week, without accepting Jesus Christ as Lord of their lives. Why is it? Why is it that so many people never find the treasure? You know, today, today, thousands of people have died that never found the treasure, never found value in Jesus Christ and the kingdom. Yes, and the reason why they don't find value, today men and women are eagerly seeking earthly treasures that blind them, that blinds us. Their minds are filled with selfish ambition, thoughts for the sake of riches, honor, and power. 
From them, the treasures of the word are hidden. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age, who's the God of this age? Satan. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of of God. <clears throat> you know, the Savior saw when he was here on earth that men and women, women were absorbed in getting gain. We're losing sight of the eternal realities. So he, he wanted to break this infatuation that people had with things of this earth that was paralyzing the souls of people. In Matthew 16, verse 26, Lifting up his voice, he cried, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, you know, in those days, in Jesus' time, people used to hide their money in the ground. They buried it in the ground. To guard it from thieves, to guard it from an invasion, they would hide their money in the ground. And sometimes the person who hid the money died, and the money was lost and forgotten. Yes, that seems to be the case here. It, it, it seems like the person that buried this money, buried this money, you know, had died. Uh, the story implies that the original owner was not there to claim, to claim this treasure. But the point is this. The man found something of value, and he was willing to give up everything, everything, to gain that treasure for himself. Once again, the parable is a simple story that makes a point. The parable simply tells us, makes the point that there really is, there really is something so, a treasure that is so valuable, it is worth giving everything up for it, to have it for yourself. The second part of the story has to do with the joy of discovery. Jesus says, <clears throat> when the man found the treasure, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold everything he had and bought the field. You know, joy is an important part of this story, of this parable. <clears throat> the man goes and sells all his possessions, <clears throat> but does so, he does it with a joyful heart. He is joyful to discover the treasure. He is not upset because he has to sell everything, get rid of everything. He does it because he wants to. In fact, in fact, he didn't have to do it. He does it because he wanted to, because he was glad to sell everything, get rid of everything. He is full of joy at the discovery of the treasure. That is... He is glad to sell everything to obtain this important treasure. And that leads, me, leads us to the third part of the story, which focuses on total commitment, sold all he had. Notice that man doesn't sell some of his possessions in order to buy the field. He doesn't sell most of them. It says here, he sells all, all that he has, to buy that field. 
You know, we should not confuse this part of the story, this part of the parable, with salvation by works or buying your way into the kingdom. We cannot buy our salvation. The Bible is clear that salvation is a free gift of God, of God's grace. When we respond, <clears throat> when we respond to the Holy Spirit's prompting, prompting us to repent of our sin. This is not something that you can purchase. Salvation cannot be purchased or earned. And so Jesus is not teaching that you can buy your salvation here. The idea is simply this, that the treasure is so valuable that it is worth everything to obtain it. Compare this to what Jesus said to the crowds in Luke 14, 33. Any of you who does not give up everything, <clears throat> everything he has, cannot be my disciple. It's not that we buy our way into the kingdom, but rather that the kingdom is worth it. <clears throat> yes, it's worth everything we have to follow Jesus, to serve Jesus. So Jesus, what he does here, he shares the parable of the treasure. Then immediately, he goes on to share the parable of the pearl. Verses 45 and 46. Again, <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, these parables are twin parables. There's reason why they're put together. It's one right after the other in the Bible. They teach similar truths, but in different ways, and we're going to see that. The parable, this parable also has three parts. So let's look at it together. The first part of the parable has to do with the search for ultimate value. The merchant in this story is a person who travels for business. And this particular merchant is on a journey. He is searching. He is looking for it. Searching for the finest pearls to purchase them. Pearls were considered the most valuable items in the time of Christ. More precious than silver, than diamonds and gold. Jesus tells us that the merchant is looking for fine pearls, which means he is looking for the most beautiful pearls, the best pearls. Yes, those of highest quality and value. And so, this part of the story <clears throat> represents the search for value. The search for value. The first part of the parable is a little different. It's a little different than the first part of the parable of the treasure. <clears throat> in the parable of the treasure, the man wasn't looking for anything. He just ran into that treasure. He's plowing and he thinks he hits a rock, <clears throat> begins to dig, and it's a, it's a treasure that he wasn't looking for. <clears throat> he just happened to find that treasure in the field. You know, a lot of people are like that. There's a lot of people. They aren't looking for God. They aren't even thinking about him. When God suddenly enters their life and sweeps them off their feet, that's what happened to the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> when he was on his way to Damascus, <clears throat> persecuting the Christians. He had orders from the Sanhedrin to imprison them, to bring them back to Jerusalem. <clears throat> and what happens? He's on his way persecuting Christians when a bright light knocks them off, knocks them to the ground. And he hears a voice, a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he answers, Lord, who are you? I am Jesus, 
who you are persecuting. You know, Jesus identifies with those that are being persecuted, having hard times. He wasn't looking. Saul wasn't looking for the treasure. But God was seeking him. You know, my mother, our home where I was raised, you know, my mother used to like to party. We used to have music for, when we, when we had a baptism, when we did first communion. I mean, we had, by the way, we had great godparents. And so, the first communions, it wasn't, it wasn't a uh, religious time. I and mean, we'd have a party, a celebration, there was drinking, it was very different. I remember when I was a kid, our Saturdays, our mother would take us to the movies, and she would sit us up in the front row, and she'd be in the back with her friends. But you know, one day, one day, <coughs> two ladies came by our home, Sister Gertrude Smith and Esther Paredes. They came to our home, <coughs> excuse me, and they offered my mother Bible studies. And my mother accepted. And she went through all the studies. And she was baptized. And our home did an about face. Did an about face. You know, it became a happy home. You know, my mother was a hard worker. When we were growing up, she sent us to Bible camps. She invested time on us. I don't think. My mother wasn't looking for the kingdom. She was having a great old time. The kingdom found her. And so, but when you have people like this merchant, oh, well, first of all, this, the, this merchant that we're talking about here, who was looking for God, yes, you know, they are searching for truth and meaning and purpose in life. There are people like that. There are people that run into it, like my mother. There's others that are searching for something better, something of more value. They are searching for truth, for meaning and purpose in life. They study different religions and may even try some of them out. Yes, Desperately seeking the truth about God and about the gospel in the ultimate value. You know what? God works both ways to bring people to himself. God says in Isaiah 65.1, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. They did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek. Seek me. That was, that was Paul. That was my mother. And then, that's a hidden treasure, right? But God also, in Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's a merchant searching for pearls. But whether a person is looking for God or not, we are all looking, searching, wanting ultimate value in life. We are all looking, searching for meaning and purpose in life that ultimate, ultimately satisfies. Some theologians said, God made us for himself. And that void we have in our hearts, he's the only one that can fill it. Jesus Christ. Yes, and then the second part of this story of the pearl, the merchant was originally looking for many pearls of great value, but instead he found the pearl of the greatest value. This was the granddaddy of all pearls, the pearl of pearls. Of the, it was, I put a number of things here, the best of them all, magnificent, beautiful, of the highest quality, 
unequaled, unrivaled, incomparable, matchless, superior, supreme. Yes, he was looking for pearls when he found the pearl of great price. And he had to have it. <clears throat> he wanted to have it as his own. And that great pearl, magnificent pearl, the greatest pearl, is Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Yes, and that brings me to the third part of this story, which is identical with the part of the treasure. Total commitment. Sold everything he had. <clears throat> Just like the man that found the treasure in the field. Sold everything he had. So the merchant, in this parable, sells everything he has in order to buy that pearl. Yes, notice he sells everything. Not just the pearls he had purchased, but everything else to obtain, to obtain that granddaddy of all pearls. That is Jesus. Jesus and the kingdom. You know, knowing God through Jesus Christ will change your life. It will what? It will change your lives. He will make you a new person. When you find Jesus, when you find that hidden treasure, you will be born again. And then you continue to grow, of course, sanctification. When you receive Jesus, he is a pearl of great price. Yes, nothing is more important and of more value than Jesus Christ on this earth. Yes, God and Jesus are worthy of our very best, our very best service, the best we can give. God alone is worth our total commitment. If there's somebody you want to give your life to in service, it is Jesus Christ. So we have looked at these twin parables of the treasure and the pearl this morning. And now I would like to quickly look at three applications, three applications <clears throat> of these pearls. The first application has to do with the joy of salvation. What? The joy of salvation. King David prayed in Psalms 51, 12, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. God says in Isaiah 12, 3, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. There is no greater joy, no greater joy than the joy of being saved, the joy of salvation, the joy of knowing Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. The joy of knowing God, the Father, through Jesus Christ, the Son. <clears throat> you know, people talk. People talk of sacrificing for God and his kingdom. But there is really no sacrifice in giving everything up for God. Because we get so much back. We get so much back in return. Neither of these men and these, and these two parables, the parable of the treasure, regret it. The choice of giving up everything for the treasure and the pearl. They were filled with joy at the prospect. Every sacrifice you make for God is fully repaid with the joy of knowing and serving God. And foremost, was foremost in our life. When God truly reveals himself to you through Christ. There is a joyful, spontaneous abandonment of self and sin for Christ and the gospel. That's a joy of salvation. The second application has to do with the overwhelming importance of eternal life. Don't you want eternal life? It has to do with the overwhelming importance. Hey, we're here temporary. Very short. Matthew 16, 24, 26. If anyone will come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good? What good will it be for a man, and I would say woman, if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? And there's a lot of people doing that. A lot of people doing that. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? What good will it do to gain the whole world, gain so many things in this world, but lose our soul? Lose our soul. What could be more important than obtaining the free gift of eternal life? Don't you want eternal life? I sure do. Through Jesus Christ. You've heard the saying, eternity is long, so don't be wrong. This life is too short compared to eternity. Too short. Compared to eternity. We have looked at the joy of salvation and the overwhelming importance of eternal life. And then our third application <clears throat> this morning is this. The surpassing greatness of Jesus Christ. Jesus must come first. The Apostle Paul had this to say. He had to make that decision. This is what he says in Philippians 3, 7 through 8. <clears throat> but whatever was to my profit, Paul says, I now considered loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness <clears throat> of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Yes. <clears throat> Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He's the eternal Son of God who died on the cross for our sins. He paid the full price. He is our Savior. He is the beautiful one. He's a treasure. He is the magnificent one, the pearl, the treasure hidden in the field. He's a pearl of great price. Yes, Jesus alone is worth our total commitment to follow him, to serve him. Your life, your everything, your all is Jesus Christ. Nothing compares to the surpassing greatness, beauty of Jesus Christ. You know, some people never come to Jesus <clears throat> because they don't want to give up things that are sinful in this world that bring no real joy. Yeah. But things that are going to perish, think about it. Things that are going to perish, we put so much interest in, so much time into seeking. Yes, nothing is more important than entering the kingdom of God. Only Jesus can bring you in. Only Jesus can bring you into the kingdom. So nothing is more important in this earth than Jesus Christ. He is a passport to heaven. You know, if there's someone here that hasn't really invited Jesus into their life, or if you want to recommit, there's a prayer. You could do it silently. There's a prayer I have here and I want to share with you. We can bow our heads and listen to this prayer. Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. If this prayer rings with anybody that's here this morning. We're going to say it again. You can si silently follow me and accept Jesus Christ if you want to go, if you want to really have the joy of eternal life. Let us bow our heads. And silently, if you want to recommit, 
If you want Jesus to come into your life, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins, invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as the Lord and Savior of my life. If you prayed that prayer, Jesus has come into your life. And you can be assured, he's going to guide you. He's going to help you to find satisfaction in life. And that satisfaction, we finally only in the treasure and the pearl, which is Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank <clears throat> you.